the absence of purpose, we will start digging holes in our life. Any vice will lead to self-destruction, holes in your life. And so people who think like, no, no, I'm a human being. I'm like, no, bro, you're a human animal. You're a human animal until you get to a point of self-awareness and consciousness where literally these, these eyes, which is just a window that you're experiencing life through and you can respond and not react. The majority says if you go through heartbreak, if you're on your knees because your life is falling apart, rush out as quickly as possible. What I've discovered is stay in as long as possible because difficulty is growth in wolf's clothing. The greatest people on the planet have suffered the most. Suffering is not bad. I'm suggesting suffering is awesome. The, the ego runs from suffering because it's the death of the ego. But I believe pain, difficult times, failure, loss, is purification and preparation for personal heroism. We're trying so hard in our lives to fit in, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. How do you stop making excuses? You have to accept that all your excuses are lies. They are lies, all of them. Think about the things that you tell yourself, the lies you use to rationalize taking the easy road, leaving discipline behind. You don't have time. That's a lie. You're too busy. Sure you are. That's a lie. And the truth is, you have time. You have the skill. You have the knowledge and the support and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. Cast out the lies, burn them down, and listen to the truth, and live the truth, and go out and get it done. You gotta get real doggish. You gotta get downright funky if you wanna make it. Now like I was telling you before, if you wanna be ordinary, you ain't even gotta listen to me. Just go on about your business. Every challenge that you are facing, it belongs to your journey. It is part of your journey. And to acknowledge, to accept whatever life is throwing at you and, and still have on the mind that this is like just a test. This is how I used to think for myself yeah I never begged for an easy life but when challenges are coming right now and especially when you then realize if you want you can overcome them see the point is you don't know how much future you've got what's gone is gone there's absolutely nothing you can do about it some of you've had divorces some of you um, have probably had bankruptcies. Some of you have had terrible things happen in the past. But what's gone is gone. It's in the past. And to spend your time focusing on the past is to spend the only thing that you've got, and that's what's right here, right now, because the sand never stops running. This is all we've got. And to spend your time now thinking of what happened there is making absolute certain that the future is going to be the same as the past. The bigger issue with fine is that you say it to yourself. That thing that you want, I guarantee you, you've convinced yourself that you're fine not having it. That's why you're not pushing yourself. It's the areas in your life where you've given up, where you've said, oh, I'm fine. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have though is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? 
Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure? If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. It's some really, really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're going to have to do extra. Two plus one is always going to equal two. Two plus two is going to equal four. In 10 years of motherfucking work, when everybody else is partying, making excuses, doing the cool thing on the weekend, it's going to pay off. So I always ask people and challenge people, like when you say something to the extent of, not you, but just a person, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'm like, who promised you that? Right? I'll get to it a month from now. I'm like, who promised you that? Right? Because light changes so quick. Right? And as people, we're often arrogant. I was one of them. We live our lives and we feel as if we're promised something. Right? But when you think about it, it's like when we try to control things. But when you really think about the macro of life and the grand scheme of life, we really don't have any control. But just life in general, we have no control of that. You're not afraid of having a your body. You're afraid of the effort. See, what you understand is this. We're all being tested. And that road to success is a bumpy ass road. Has the potholes, nails, detours and spin. A lot of you are gonna die with a nicely preserved body. No bruises, no scars. You also have an empty resume. Stay hard. With that motivation, go forward into the heat of the battle where victory is forged. You don't have to have this victim mentality. You don't have to go around telling everybody your sad story of what happened to you and why you're this way. You can go and rewrite the story. You can grab the pen back from the hands of the abusers, of the bullies, of those that created limiting beliefs, and you could rewrite the story yourself. In all the blank pages that exist in your book of life. But that only happens when you start doing the self-work, when you commit to self-mastery. And I'm telling you, it's not just by reading a couple of self-help books. Figuring out who you are at your core, at your essence, what makes you tick. And only then will you be able to set higher standards of expectations for yourself. Only then will you begin to reach the milestone of impact, income, influence, inspiration. God, it's such a cool thing to be able to break through the seals of all your limiting beliefs in life. There's going to be things that go on that are out of your control. The worst thing you can do is let something that's out of your control control you. Get control of yourself. Get control of your emotions. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. Instead, stay calm and figure out how to move forward. There's a terminology in, in psychiatry called relational illness. You've heard people say, you make me sick. Some people can make you sick. That if you fool around with them long enough, will send you to an early grade. That will drive your blood pressure up. That will turn your hair gray. Who is it you need to get out of your life? You need to ask yourself the question, what is this relationship doing to me? It might be your spouse. It might be friends. It might be your job making you sick stressing you out and you being a volunteer victim are you willing to die for listen if there's only one pedestal you must be on it the idealized version of you must be on it not me not any other guru or influencer or thought leader you get on the pedestal you become the idealized version you become the hero in your life's story if your life is a movie and the movie ends, do you want your name at the end in the credits to be the hero and the star, or do you want it to be taxi driver number two? We start to trap ourselves within our own mind. 
in our mind is this big barrier, this big wall. And once we get to pain and suffering, that wall gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And the mind says, it's time to quit. If we're able to find out different ways to get around that, the first thing you have to do is just to calm your mind down. The very first thing you have to do is don't give yourself a way out. You gotta trick yourself also and say, you know what? I might quit, but I'm not gonna quit right now. If your mind knows I'm not gonna quit, I'm not gonna quit. You're not gonna quit. Let your mind think it has a little control over you. Then, when you're able to calm down, you're able to think. And then realize, I call it the cookie jar, is you have to have something that fuels you in this time. So once you calm down, what's gonna get you out of the chair? You gotta remember that I've been in times just as hard as this. So I reflected back on my life. Most of us were raised to become ordinary. And I'm not putting down ordinary, but ordinary is just not good enough for me. Ordinary is you go through your life and you fill out the forms and you pay your taxes and you do what your parents tell you and you're honorable and you're honest and you're a good citizen and then you die. Extraordinary is something very, very different. This is about recognizing within yourself that there's something very, very extraordinary that you haven't been trained to believe in, to come to a place where you can apply it and put it into your life. You can go way beyond ordinary. You can go way beyond just being average. All of us are extraordinary. We just have to come to believe it. There's things that you know you're supposed to do as a human being. Things that you know are gonna improve your life. Do those things. There's things that you know are gonna make you a worse person and make your life worse. Don't do those things. Don't do the things that are making you weaker. Start doing the things that are gonna make you stronger and smarter and faster and healthier and gonna make you a better human being. Things that you have in you that you don't even know, but until you get outside of your comfort zone, you will never discover it. You have something special. You have greatness within you. But in order to manifest your greatness, you've got to put yourself in a perpetual state of discomfort. Yes, you've got to challenge yourself. You've got to raise the bar on yourself. You've got to get busy. You've got to work your plan. It's time for me to do me, to pursue my dream, to work my plan, to implement the things that I want for myself and for my family and for for my kids, and, and what is your legacy? What do you want to do for yourself? Most people quit and never finish what they started is because they continually stack L's instead of W's. You probably do things to set yourself up to fail in life. You set your alarm clock to wake up at a certain time, and then you hit that snooze button. What did you do? You stacked the L. If you think that you're meant for big goals and big dreams, change lots of lives and impact and inspire people, well, you probably need a lot of confidence. If you're always stacking losses, hitting the snooze button, saying you're gonna go work out and you don't, saying you're gonna eat clean and you don't, saying you're gonna read a few pages out of a book and you don't, and all those things seem small and trivial until they add up over days, weeks, months, and years, and you have hardened your subconscious into knowing that you are an imposter, that you are not a promise keeper, and therefore your reputation with yourself erodes. Your reputation with yourself, as it turns out, is your confidence. You will hold sturdy against anything that's thrown at you, based on that firm inner conviction that you will not falter, you will not flounder, you will not fail. It's easy to give up. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. All right, man, I'm, I'm done. I ain't gone. It's very easy. But what's hard is going, yo, yesterday, I got nothing from working as hard as I could. Nothing happened from that. I'm gonna do the same thing again today, but I'm gonna try to go harder. That's the hardest thing in the world. And give 100% and, and be in the same position that you were each day, but mentally know that you're trying and trying and trying. That's, that's a real, that's a real grind. Everything in life comes down to this. I'm telling you right now, no matter how hard you train, how hard you go out there and run and swim and lift weights, whatever you're doing to get in shape, 
it always comes down to this. Because when, when, when you're training and your mind is all jacked up, all you are is a bigger, faster, stronger critter. What are the odds? What are the odds that you would still be here, having faced the things that you have? What are the odds that you'd be still active when everyone else has given up? What are the odds that were stacked against you, and yet you're here? Other than death, all failure is psychological. Now, this does not mean that you won't lose some battles, because you will, we all will. But it does mean that as long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't give up, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. It just means you've made a, a temporary tactical retreat, it means you've made a, a brief withdrawal so that you can regroup and reattack. So, as far as I'm concerned, if you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated. And you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned. You've, you've gained experience. And you're still alive. And you have memories to make. So get up and go get after it. There's a purpose to your pain. There's a reason why you have had to endure. You may not see it now, you may not feel it right now, but there is a purpose in our pain. If you're failing repeatedly, then there's probably something wrong it's possible that there's something wrong with the way that you're conceptualizing the world. Because you have a choice, right? If, if you keep making sacrifices and they don't work, there's a binary choice. And one is, well, there's something wrong with the structure of reality. And the other is, there's something wrong with your approach. And so then you might say, well, let's take the first idea. There's something wrong with the structure of reality. It's like, you're really gonna say that, are you? You're really gonna come out and say, I knew enough to judge the nature of being. And then the alternative is also quite frightening because then, you know, you, it's you that's making the mistakes and you might be wrong at a really deep level and that might mean that a lot of you has to burn off and be transformed. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible, which means that if you see what's not there, that means that you have these bold, uncomfortable, visions and intentions and ideas and you're gonna have all of these random people popping up in many forms trying to get you off of your path and you're so convinced that this is what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing and the people that you're supposed to be doing with you're so convinced that this is what it is you drive people crazy and you make people uncomfortable because their goal is to distract you and fuck up your plan. Live your life, make your mark. Don't wake up every day being consumed in everybody else's thoughts and their intentions. You're not supposed to be another person that lived and died and didn't do anything significant. Hide our true selves from the world because we're so afraid to be judged. We're so afraid that people will walk out of their life. We're so afraid to lose this and lose that. I'm gonna tell you something, I want you to hear me clear. When you don't be who you are, when you don't truly be yourself and who you are, you know what happens in your life? You attract the wrong things in your life. Some of us, we attracted the wrong jobs because to get that opportunity, we have to change who we were. And the opportunity might have been good at first, but now we're stuck in a place where we're miserable. Walk in with a sense of dignity and pride. You put in the work. You didn't get this because someone gave it to you. You weren't giving it to you because of an inheritance or because of your last name. You earned it because of what was within you. Let them call you odd. Because you break the odds. You're a winner. You were born one. You will be one. Stop making excuses. 
Simple as that. You can make a million excuses why you didn't get that raise, why you didn't take that, take that leap of faith. You can make a million excuses, but you know deep down inside and consciousness is eating away at you. It's not a reason. It's an excuse. And when you stop making excuses, the only alternative is then results. I'm not saying that everything you do, you should be successful at. You will have periods of defeat. You have it within you now to overcome every obstacle, to come over, overcome everything that tried to block you, stop you, delay you, or determine what you were by a word or a phrase that someone else used. They said you would never amount to anything. No, what it really meant is you would never amount to what they could calculate. Phenomenal is a choice. And you made that choice. Let the adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. So, so in the future, you look back at these struggles and you say to them, thank you. You made me better. Question yourself. Question yourself every day. Ask yourself, who, who am I? What have I learned? What have I created? What forward progress have I made? What am I doing to improve myself today to get better, faster, stronger, healthier, smarter? Ask yourself, is this what I want to be? This. Is this all I've got? Is this everything I can give? Is this going to be my life? You got one life, and that one life, the goal for us is to live it to the best of our ability from the beginning to what's at the end. In the middle, in the beginning, middle, you're gonna do things, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna fuck up. You're supposed to learn and then move forward with the understanding of what not to do. And when you move forward, life may get better, it may not, but somewhere along the lines it's gonna click. Your past is not your future. It's not. But each time you go talking about your past and what went wrong and why you're this way, you just reinforce the past to become your future. And you gotta realize that all of us, all of us can do better. We can be better. You just gotta take that first step. And that first step is when you begin to ask those questions. So, advice on asking questions, ask the hard questions. And ask the hard questions of yourself. And in the answers to those questions is where you find that path. The path to progress and the path to freedom. And this is on you. And I get it, a lot of things may influence your perspective over the years, but how you see life is on you. And you got a choice. Your perspective can either be your power or it can be your prison. Forget easier said than done. Everything in this world is easier said than done. Some of you still ain't clear about your life. If you're in a prison mindset, you blame it, complain, you're looking at everything as an excuse. There's people that's looking at this year as an obstacle, and there's people that's looking at this year as an opportunity. And trust me, when the smoke clears, you're going to see who is who. So you got to break that prison mindset. 
the groundwork of beginning to build self-confidence is to begin to keep the promises you make to you. And that's why it's important to begin to even make small promises. If you're gonna get up at a certain time in the morning, not only do it, but then give yourself credit. Say, I did what I said I was gonna do. If it's in your diet or your fitness, don't just eat the healthy foods. Go, I'm doing what I said I was going to do. You begin to build this reputation. If you're constantly being influenced and moved by what other people think about you, it means there's a deficiency in what you think about you. It's a pattern of keeping the promises that you make to you. That's the groundwork of self-confidence. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. It may get your power. You got to say, no matter how hard it may be, no matter how impossible it may seem, no matter how much this year sucks, I'm still going to get the greatest me out of this. I'm still going to step up to the plate. I'm still going to shoot shots because you'll never make shots if you don't shoot them. The greatest strikeout in life is not stepping up to the plate. And some of you right now are thinking tomorrow. You know how many people said tomorrow that took their talents to the grave? You know, you know how many people lived a whole life of I wish I would have and they get to the end of their life dying with their dreams, dying with their talents? A lot of you are trying to find inspiration and motivation with a depressed mindset. You're depressed because you're not doing shit with yourself. You don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life. You need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration. Put challenges in front of yourself. When you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's when you find inspiration. Try to be 10% better than you were last week. So if you're running 30 miles a week, run 33. If you're swimming 500 meters, swim 550. If some of you aren't doing sh you're 10% is just getting off the couch. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. Duty means do what you're supposed to do. That's how we build courage. By ignoring how you feel and ignoring what you desire and by doing what you are supposed to do. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it, and you're gonna go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care how much you work on yourself, there are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's Law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. Remember, there's always more to learn. There's always new information to absorb. You can always hone your skills. You can always improve your technique. You can always increase your knowledge. And you can always, always get better. There are people who want to play it safe in life. They don't want to have a loss. Yet they say they want to win. You cannot win without risking loss. You cannot play it safe in life and also participate in life. Those who play it safe have caskets. But for those of you who want to live, those of you who want to thrive, those of you who want to become a winner, you must be willing to face the possibility of a loss. 
Life is one big psychological warfare that you play on yourself. You play on yourself, man. The most important conversation I ever had my, with, is, is with myself. And I was telling myself it was so tough, it was so wrong, it was so misguided. And other people start to write that dialogue for you also. And start to be what you say to yourself every single day. It's very important as you hold on to that dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. Stay dangerous. Age, age is a number. And you can go hard and you can keep going. And we all have more to give. So I say we step up and give it. Your brain learns patterns. And even though you may feel stuck, even though you may feel hopeless, you're not broken. You have patterns of thinking and patterns of behavior that are broken for where you are and where you want to go in life. And what's super exciting is that when you start to think about changing your life through the lens of just looking for patterns, breaking them and replacing them, it becomes less personal. It means it's time for you to fight harder, to dig in. It means it's time for you to go on the war path. In fact, when you embrace the concept or the possibility of a loss, you already make the plan of what to do when adversity comes because no one gets to a victory without adversity. You will have a breakdown. You will have an injury to overcome. You will have setbacks in life. You will have financial challenges. These are obstacles. These are not walls. Walls seal you off. Obstacles force you to move from one level to the next. And if you can get from one level to the next, you can expect new levels introduce new devils. But there is something inside of you that is greater than the devil that you face. Do things, get out of your comfort zone, create growth, create opportunity versus sitting in your house and just waiting. That's what people do now. They wait for a handout. They're waiting for this. That's what average people do. I want to whoop ass now. That's what I do. And that's because I accept being uncomfortable. I accept realizing that every day that I get up, number one, be grateful, not greedy. It's a blessing. You're alive. You're alive. That is the greatest gift in the world. Either kick ass or get your ass kicked. I'm tired of getting my ass kicked. Happiness is usually a result. If I get this, then. If I get to the top of that mountain, then I'll have the ta-da moment of, oh, I've got it. Oh, I figured it out, which is all BS because they're all false peaks. They're not false peaks, but they're never the peak. In the race of life, life's not gonna give you a glass of water when you're thirsty. You discover there are levels and layers within you that at every level that you go into, there is another level or gear inside of you. You will elevate your game to match the things that you face your lessons are what you gain when you lose. There are no losses for you. A winner is a winner within. A winner is someone who desires to become greater than they were the day before. You make a step in the right direction and you keep going. There are wins that will come in life because you kept going. If you really want to be transformed, you have to live an intentional life. Most people don't lead their life, they accept their life. And when you accept your life, 
you are living on things that are not worthy of your time and effort and energy. To go uphill, you have to be intentional. Nobody ever went uphill by accident. There are things that will happen because you are available, but you must make the mindset a permanent fixture that I came to win and participate. I will not sit on the sidelines of life and watch others do what I was born to do. You were born to win. It's just a matter of W-H-E-N. The fact is, you don't get that chance. You get one shot, one shot at this gig right here. Life. One life, that's all you've got. And regret, in and of itself, it's worthless. It does nothing for you. In fact, the only valuable thing in regret is the lesson you learned. And I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal, some dream, something they wanted to do, and they did it, then I'm saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it. It's possible. And that if someone can make that dream become a reality, that it's, it's possible that you can make your dream become reality.